Welcome back to JJ Atkins Art. Really happy that you tuned in. Today we got a special little caricature, as you can see on the screen here. We're going to be taking a look at Emma Stone, or maybe more appropriately, the character she's playing now. Let's talk about Cruella DeVille, an Emma Stone caricature. So I thought we'd start this one off today by taking a look at the reference photo that I used to kind of inspire the, the final image that we ended up with. Now, uh, I usually have several different photos of a, of a person that I'm trying to draw, but in this case, one image, one reference photo really kind of informed most of what I did, at least involving the face. So I thought we'd take a brief look at that and break down really what, what kind of stood out in terms of the main features to exaggerate for this caricature. So let's dive in. So while we're working on the rough sketch here, I am gonna use the picture in picture feature to put up the reference photo that I mentioned a couple seconds ago. Now, fair warning here, I don't tend to put up my reference photos very often because I tend to use more than one. I try my best to stay away from just using one single image to inform what my caricature is going to be. And that's mostly because what ends up happening is the caricature turns into a portrait if I'm relying on just one picture to inform my reference. Uh, I tend to get stuck when I'm trying to get it more and more realistic and more and more photo accurate to the reference I'm using. So if I can just kind of confuse my brain a little bit by using multiple photographs, I tend not to focus on one little particular body part or an eyelash or something like that. And uh, again, confuse my brain just enough to be able to focus on the exaggeration rather than trying to make a portrait study. That being said, that's exactly the approach I wanted to take with Emma Stone. Um, I'm, I'm a fan, I've seen a couple of her movies, but I'm not exactly a super fan in the sense that I have her entire uh, you know, catalog of movies memorized, but I definitely recognize her even underneath all this makeup that she's wearing for this Cruella de Vil part. And that being said, that's where the exaggeration is. Uh, I've seen her in enough movies now that I can kind of pick out certain features of her face that lend themselves to exaggeration. And, and if I'm being honest here, she's not exactly all that unusual with a lot of young Hollywood starlets that are uh, roughly her age. And not that that's a bad thing, but, but she does have some very distinct features that are not exactly all that unusual for people that go for the same type of movie roles that she goes for. So let's point them out. Big, humongous, expressive eyes and large uh, uh, makeup-worthy lips and all that combined with something of a tiny petite nose and a, uh, a petite jawline to go along with it. Now what makes Emma Stone a little bit more unique in terms of her facial features would be the, uh, what we might just call laugh lines around her uh, corners of her mouth and underneath of her chin. Those lines are very distinct on her and the challenge with her specifically is to draw them in, make sure that they're there so we can get that resemblance, but not draw them in so thick and so, you know, uh, uh, distinctly that they look almost mannish. Uh, the thicker that line gets, the more masculine it's going to look. And uh, that's something that's obviously going to be a problem if we're going for a very feminine look with this, with this particular uh, composition. And at this point, it's probably appropriate to confess that I did kind of fall victim to the thing I'm warning against, this idea of using a reference photo and drawing something of a portrait out of it, despite the fact that that's not really the intent. Um, so as we get a little bit further into this next layer of sketch, this next version of the uh, rough sketch, I have decided to go in and get a little bit more detail oriented with the shadow and go almost that portrait route with it. Now in this case it actually served me some purpose. Um, think of it almost like I was doing an experiment or maybe a color study if you will. But a black and white or a black and gray color study might be the better way to put it. I'm getting my line work in and that's all well and good. But at some point I'm starting to realize this hair is going to be another problem that I'm going to have to solve. Not just the black portion over to the left, but this white portion over the right. How to show texture and depth in there when that's not necessarily something that I usually get involved in with a lot of detail when I'm going into my coloring phase. So let's start getting some texture in here. Let's start getting some planning of the darks and lights and shadows while I'm still in my so-called pencil phase. And in doing some experimentation, some planning, I can kind of figure out where my three-dimensionality is coming from. When I'm taking an approach like this, when I'm stepping into the unknown, I like to start off with getting out the portions that I'm comfortable with. So I already knew from the reference photo here that I had a lot of shadow that I was gonna be punching in along the jawline and the cheek on the right hand side of the face. Same thing with the forehead. And notice how I'm kind of getting that shadow blended in because again, I'm going for that portrait look here to get the more subtle shadows. 
Now, the other reason I'm doing this too is because in terms of color, there's not a lot going on here. So I wasn't entirely sure I was actually gonna end up doing a full color rendering of this. If you notice, I started by actually making the background darker so I could punch in the whites. And my initial approach on this was going to be a black and white study of this as a finished piece because Emma Stone, with all of her makeup on in here, is so very pale. And then you put that in contrast with the white and black of her costume in the background. It just kind of lent itself to it. But ultimately I decided that splash of color with that red in the lips was really kind of important to the composition. And it did bring out some fleshiness in her uh, skin, even though it is very pale despite that. So even though I did something of a shadow study on this, uh, intending it to be a full black and white piece, I think it ended up being really good as a study rather than as the final piece because adding the coloring in later was a lot of fun with this, especially when we get into the costume, which at this point, I wasn't really sure what I was doing yet. So let's just kind of point that out. Again, the reference photo that we're using here is gonna be going away pretty soon because now we've got the basics of the face and the hair in. You can already see that I'm kind of going a little bit left field of, of what the actual photograph that I'm using for reference is. I've, I've changed up the hairstyle in other words. And obviously with the exaggerations, I'm not going so literal to the photo anyway. So I had some really good reference there for the shadows and light sources. And now that I've had that established on the face in my this black and gray study here, I can do something similar with the hair and then use that to get into what I want to be the final composition of the body and ultimately what's the rest of this piece. Now, here's the thing. It's not shown in my reference photo, but I made a decision somewhere about halfway through this piece that if I was going to be doing Cruella de Vil, I should probably have some Dalmatians somewhere in there. It just kind of lends itself to the whole narrative that I'm trying to tell. So that became the point. Reference photo goes away, we don't need it anymore, and now let's work on something a little bit more original with our composition. So I'm um, fleshing in some rough ideas as to how I want the body to stand. I have noticed that through a lot of the promotional uh, commercials that they've been putting up for this movie that she uh, tends to hold a cane. And you know, while we're talking about this, let me put this out there too, I, I haven't actually seen the movie. I have the Disney streaming service, uh, or at least I have a subscription to it, but I'm not paying extra just to see a movie that's a new release. Um, I'm interested. I'll see it when it's free to watch, but I'm not going to pay extra for it. So in the meantime, everything I'm using for reference and anything that I'm using in terms of an idea is coming largely from a marketing campaign and not from actually having seen the film itself. So I don't know that anything I'm doing here is movie accurate. All I'm really doing is just some ideas that I know of based on the Cruella de Vil character. The fact that there are Dalmatians in the movie, I've seen it in some of the commercials. And I did get some reference photos that kind of somewhat match the costume that I'm putting her in, although I will uh, kind of admit that I took some artistic liberties uh, anywhere that I saw fit, basically. The important thing here wasn't to get her costume movie accurate. It was mostly just try to get a resemblance in her face. And I think I accomplished that. And at the end of the day, I was able to throw in a couple of Dalmatians and there's nothing wrong with a couple of puppies uh, at the same time. So the the sketch of this is kind of getting finished up here. And, and all I really mean is some of the decision-making. When I'm doing some of these sketches, I'm still kind of in decision-making mode. I'm still kind of doing some experimentation on where I want things to be. And I don't know why it didn't occur to me at first, but I should have known from the get-go the two Dalmatians were gonna end up being in the end piece here. Uh, it just makes sense. We have one figure standing front and center, dead dead in the middle of the frame here. Um, how do you balance that out? You do something of a triangle down at the bottom. So a wider base, one Dalmatian on one side, another on the other side would create something of a triangular composition that's just a little bit more friendly to the eye and helps the eye kind of move around the picture a little bit more. Um, so I, I will say this, I, I, since I haven't really mentioned it up until now, shameless plug time. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please take a chance to do so right now. Click on that subscribe button, click on the like button. More importantly, leave some comments. Um, I brought up a lot of different topics here between reference photographs, what to exaggerate in caricatures, how we do some black and gray studies, uh, portraiture versus exaggeration. And even right now I'm talking a little bit more about taking artistic license with costumes. Composition is another topic topic I've gotten into, and we can certainly talk about the black and white uh, concept of contrast. All these topics are pretty heady topics, and I've barely touched on any of them for more than a few seconds. But if it's something that you have interest in, if it's something you want to see a little bit more focus on, then all you have to do is leave a comment, ask a question, and maybe even make a suggestion of a picture you'd like to see me draw in the future, uh, maybe some sort of a caricature you'd like to see, and I can try to take that on and, and kind of address the topic at hand. Uh, for right now, there wasn't really any specific thing I wanted to talk to with Emma Stone, other than the fact that I will say, 
that um, I, I've been meaning to do an Emma Stone caricature for some time, and this was a perfect opportunity to do it just because Corella Deville is such a recognizable character. Uh, but I think this is another example where I'm doing a caricature more of the character than I am of the actor. So if I was to draw Emma Stone just as Emma Stone the actress, I might take some different uh, uh, kind of choices with this. And, and I, I might even speak to a couple of other caricature artists that I looked at in the meantime. Uh, when I was deciding that I was doing some sort of an Emma Stone type caricature, I went and took a look at some other artists' take on that subject matter, and they made some very different decisions than I did. Although, having said that, I feel like I did catch a good resemblance of Emma Stone, even if it's just Emma Stone dressed as Cruella de Vil. Alright? So, this is uh, the point where we're going to start seeing things speed up a little bit. Um, I've slowed things down significantly so we can get a really good idea as to where the sketch, the uh, composition, and the final drawing came from. You can see that I finally made that decision there to get my second Dalmatian in. And again, this is just reference photographs. A simple Google search of Dalmatians, and I picked two or three, maybe four random Dalmatian um, photographs to use as reference with the idea being that I just wanted Dalmatians that have what I deem to be a good random uh, scattering of spots and so the positions that the dogs were sitting in wasn't as important as me being able to get in a good scattering of spots that I thought looked photogenic. Now, what does that mean to me? Maybe something different to you, but I just kind of took a stab at it. And the point was I didn't take a lot of time on it. I just Googled some images. I found three or four that just kind of visually looked stimulating to me, pulled them off the side and kept them on my computer screen while I kind of sketched out my uh, my roughs of these Dalmatians. Uh, the other thing about Dalmatians is that they are a very specific breed of dog, which means that if you get something wrong, like the shape of the ear, the shape of the tail, or something like that, it's it's, it's going to be obvious to people that know those breeds of dogs. So I needed those references to make sure that I got the nose uh, right and, and the floppy ears right, and etc. My experience personally with dogs has always been smaller dogs. I've never had a dog that large before. Um, my dog experience has largely been uh, my mother's Yorkshire Terriers or my own Boston Terriers today. So again, nothing large like that. And uh, even though I'm familiar with Dalmatians, I, do, I do, definitely don't have their anatomy memorized enough to be able to do it by memory. So reference is the way to go. Nice and easy. All right. So sketches again about done here. The inking phase is about concluded. The only thing that I'll say here is, is that again, that this is about to speed up quite a bit when we get into coloring phase. Uh, mostly because I spent a lot of time in a lot of my previous videos talking over and over and incessantly about how I do coloring, how I do lights, and how I do shadow to achieve whatever effect I'm trying to go for or any particular piece. Now. I don't want to bore by talking about the same thing over and over and over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link up in the upper right hand corner and that link in the upper right hand corner is going to be to a uh, series of videos that you can go check out that have a lot of discussion topics when it comes to shadow and light. Um, if you stick around to the end of the video, you will see that I'll put up some pl uh, place cards for some other videos that will kind of speak to some of the similar stuff. The reality is, is that if you go back into my archive and look at just about any video, that, I, that I've done in the past year or so, you're gonna see some discussion, at least on some level, of lights and shadow, and uh, the coloring technique. If you're looking for something that's an in-depth tutorial and specifically that, those things are very specifically mentioned in the title of those videos as well. So feel free to look around in the library, check it out, and again, I've said it before and I'll say it again, don't hesitate to subscribe, like, share, and comment. I can use all that good uh, stuff to uh, help out my channel and its attention. Now. One last thing, and I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Uh, I know it's been a little while since I posted any videos, and I apologize for that. There have been some personal things going on. Nothing bad, uh, just some personal life changes. For instance, I've recently bought a house, and I recently had a minor surgery. Uh, nothing, again, bad, but uh, just some stuff that kind of distracted me from uh, being able to take care of business with the channel. The other thing I'll mention is that this is going to be the last video that I'm going to do on this iPad. Um, I have on order the brand new uh, iPad Pro uh, that just got released a couple of months ago. So with a little bit of luck, cross fingers, this will help improve some of the performance of Procreate and iMovie to help me get uh, pictures and videos out on a little bit more timely basis. Um, last time I'll say it before I sign off, thanks again for all the love, support, and attention, but I can use a little bit more. Don't forget to subscribe. Click that subscribe button. Don't forget to like. Click that like button. Don't forget to leave a comment. Tell me some things that you liked about the channel, some things you'd like to see on the channel, and ultimately, don't forget to share. Here's kind of a time lapse of what of how this whole thing took place. I hope you like it. A little something new I've added as well. So we're going to start with our reference photo, and then we'll phase into each phase of the uh, picture from beginning to end. All right, I'm going to sign off for here. Enjoy, and I hope I see you again soon.
Take care.